going on guys, Real Deal Fishing here, and this past week we had a really good talk with uh, Mr. Bill Simantel, the founder of the BBZ series, really, really awesome guy, and we learned a lot. I'm going to play that video for you guys. Hey guys, Bill Simantel from the 2016 ICAST show in Florida. Real legit fishing with Jake and Sam, or Sam or Jake, one of the two. We got these guys. There's some hot sticks out there. They're fishing tournaments out there in Lanier. They are going to be the big guys coming up. But I think they're going to ask me some questions, and I'm going to give them the secrets. So, who's going to ask first? What do you guys want to know? I'll start it off. So, uh, with the BBZ one wraps, we have the 40, the 50, and over here we have the 30. These are going to be top one. You can wake them. You can do all kind of cool stuff with these. Let's we'll start off with the rod and rod combos. You're going to want to throw with these. Well, what we're doing is the first one that came out a few years ago, guys, is the Rat 50, and this is one of the biggest models I made, but it catches smaller fish too. I mean, if you've seen some of the videos I've done and some of the TV shows, you can catch one pound spotted bass on it just as easy as six pound fish. Um, this one you're going to look, I know I'm using like the Daiwa 741s and a Alexa 300, but it depends on what you guys are using. I don't know what one you're using. But minimum on monofilament, I would be looking around 18 pound test. I do maximum, but you could use whatever you want. I wouldn't go anything lower than that because of the size of the bait and you don't want to have to retie as much. Um, when you get into braid, 50 pound minimum. And then you can go up and I've done stuff over here with the Royal Martin in Florida. And, you know, he throws 80 pound braid on it. So you're looking at like a flipping stick style of bait or a rod with a bigger reel. So you will throw it with straight braid? Yeah, straight braid. You don't have to do a top shot. You just tie it on and go. The cool thing about it is what you're talking about, it wakes really well, but it also, it walks the dog. So it's a square bill that you can actually make it walk in place. And the hardest thing about like top water baits, like a, a spook or something, and you guys fish that for the spots over there in the mirror. How many times have you had a spot hit that spook and the bait flies through the air, or the front hook wraps around the line? All the time. All the time. The nice thing about having the bill in front of this wrap bait, it protects the hook as well. So when you walk it, you don't get as many foul hooks. And when a big spotted bass comes up and hits the bait, since the bill is stuck in the water, it doesn't fly out of the water as much. It actually will dive down into the fish. So your hookup ratio is going to be actually a little bit better on this. So you're still going to use your spooks and all that other stuff, but this has a, a really a cool application if you're looking for bigger fish. Awesome. Now the last couple years we've come out with the two smaller baits. We have the 40 and the 30. Um, you guys use spinning rods? I do. Oh, throw them every now and then. For like shaking? Drop shot, shaking heads shake. up in here. Yeah. So I really like using the smaller bait on a spinning rod because the difference is, is when you get a really big bait and you see the size of the hooks and stuff, I call it when a fish licks it, stick it. Okay, when a fish comes up, a lot of times, we've seen videos I've done and, and, I, and I preach this, that on the bigger baits, a lot of times the big fish will actually come up and just eat a hook. It'll test the hook, they think it's a fin or something. So if I ever feel anything on a big bait, I'm setting the hook as fast as I can. When you drop down to a smaller bait, it's like fishing a pop bar. You know, a big fish comes up and eats it, and you guys go, okay, you gotta wait for it a little bit, and then you let them load up and hook themselves. Same thing on these smaller baits. So I'm better and I'm more proficient at using a spinning rod with a high rod stick. So when I get hit, like if a spotted bass or a large mouth comes up, yeah, you just kind of let it hit it, and you just keep reeling nice and slow and let them load up and hook themselves. And I, I catch more fish on this smaller one with the spinning rod and a rod. Um, 20 pound braid, tie direct, or minimum is probably eight pound test mono, and then I, I upsize that. I wouldn't go anything over like 10 or 12 pound test with this. But, you know, if you guys are baits, you know, bait fishermen with the uh, conventional reels, you can use this to, you know, on, on a, a bait cast reel. So what scenarios would you use smaller one as opposed to, you know, the bigger, you know, 50s. Well, I'm not really versed at Lanier. I've only fished it a few times, but what are the size, I mean, is there a lot of big fish at Lanier? Oh, yeah. Uh, Shad, Blueback, Heron, all of Okay. So if, if I was looking at something real quick, it's like, if I saw, you know, the spotted bass chasing bigger Blueback Heron, man, I would be picking up a bigger, a bigger bait and try to mimic at least the size to draw that. So it's if, not only mimicking a bat. 
No, it's not because anything I think it is. Yeah, it's something disturbing stuff on the top of the water. Like, you know, on a spook, what is really a spook? It just kinda moves back and forth or or a buzzbait, you know, a buzzbait comes across the water and makes a bunch of turbulence and you see something flippery, it, it, it could be anything. So I try to, you know, match the size of what they're eating. But if you're sitting there and all of a sudden you see a little baby shad flipping out of the water, man, I would grab this one in the chrome, you've seen like I call it my germinator. I grab the chrome and the interesting thing is say the bait fish is only about three inches long. I know you guys are young, but have you heard like twerking? twerking. Yeah, twerking. A lot of times I've taken the tail out, mm -hmm. so I have a short three inch bait that wakes really hard. Mm -hmm. I'll throw that on the spinning reel and I'll, I'll use this and try to create like a little bait fish out. Okay. And I've caught a lot of fish on that. And then like the mid range, the mid range is for the people that are having questions like, oh, this is way too big. You know, I, I can't really throw this, which there's, you guys are going to throw it because you're going to win a lot of tournaments, catch big fish. Um, a lot of people throw this 30 because it's really small. The, the mid range is probably a great go to bait if you want to learn or, or try something. And this is just like a standard bait caster, like a crankbait rod, with like 12 pound mono. You never go wrong. And, and the same thing when they hit this bait, it's still a little bit on the small size. You know, like a, a DD22 or the you know the uh, Little Johns and stuff. When the fish hits it, you just want them to load up on it and just reel into it. So that's the biggest thing on these uh, rat baits, and they catch everything. Yeah. Would you want to be throwing these in the wintertime too, year round? Oh yeah. Now, here's I'll tell you some secrets because Lanier is really clear water, right? Weird. It, here's a weird thing: is there's fish that get down there in 20, 30, 40 foot of water, and they do not like top water action that has a pump or a click, super slow. So back in the day when I was building like swim baits, the big trout baits, I do the old wood plugs. These guys are so flat. These guys are so flat. It, it did crack me up. There should be more kids like this. You, you call me Bill. You're going to say yes, sir. I know how it's <laughs> um, In the wintertime, I don't like to fish these super fast. I like to fish them super slow. A nice, consistent across the water, and you want to hear it clack. And that little thump back and forth will actually call fish up. They'll see it, they'll hear it, they'll watch it. And if you bring it up and over the cover and structure, like your humps and your points and stuff, you'll get fish to lift up and intersect it and, and take it off the water super slow in the wintertime. I actually like throwing top water a little bit more in the wintertime because I don't catch as many fish, but the fish I do catch are mongrels. They're usually the bigger, bigger fish that are coming from the this absolutely year round. And the neat thing is, is this is, you know, it's open water to, you know, you guys got a bunch of creek channels, you got a ton of docks. So, you know, I don't know if you guys know, I, I preach a lot about shadow theories and how fish position in shadows and everything else. But man, if I had a dock and I could parallel a dock and like just walk it real slow or wake it real slow, duck, 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 right up into a corner where there's a, maybe a cable coming down or a ladder or an edge of the boat that had some shadow there where you see some bait and you're like, if I was a bass, that's where I'd crush something. You can bring this rat like, right up to that dock, and stop it, and then use this high rod stick, low rod stick, and you can walk it in place. And the nice thing is, it's like a spook. You know how they, they glide more, so you have to it covers more area? This one, you can still get that clacking, the spitting, the stainless strikes. You guys get it. Man. So that's the cool thing with this. And then it works also with the smaller base as well. Absolutely. Sam? Jake? Jake? Thank you. You guys all right? Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. You guys yes, are awesome. Sir. I want to thank Mr. Bill for coming out and talking to us about our BBZ Spro Rats at ICAST 2016. And I'll see you guys next time.